All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome for tuning into our webinar today. Um, we've got our uh, whole schedule of webinars for back to school time that we've got set up here. You can see, um, as you probably know, we've got uh, different themes set up on each day. So today is how to use Fiction Express with your students. It's a pretty general overview of um, all the functionalities that we have on the platform. Um, tomorrow we'll have managing your classes, students, teachers, and permissions. Uh, Wednesday is curricular alignment, um, Thursday tracking and evaluation, and Friday we have alignment with international qualifications such as IB and Cambridge. So um, there are some things that um, are touched on multiple days, but a lot of these topics, they require uh, quite a lot of time. And so as we're trying to fit everything into 20, 30 minutes with each of these, um, we have some that expand more on sort of different aspects of it. Today we'll go over a few of these things in a, a more shallow um, way. Um, so hello, my name is Grayson. I'm working with Fiction Express and I'll be going through uh, the platform today to show you the basics of everything. Um, and we'll just give it one more minute as people filter in and, and see um, how we get along. And just to please note that all of the uh, times that you see here on this schedule are in UK time. So think accordingly in terms of where you're working from. And all right, I would say that's probably enough time for everyone. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so we've got, when you log into Fiction Express, you'll see this is the dashboard. Um, and basically, for those of you that don't know, um, Fiction Express is more than just an ebook platform. Uh, it is a system of co-creation that we have the authors working with the students to basically uh, decide on the story that they're going to be reading as they go along. And there are different ways that the author is interacting with the students and able to do this. But the basis is that um, the chapters come out each week, the children get to vote on what they want to happen, and the author writes it accordingly. Um, we also have a ton of other functionalities and activities that allow the students to um, work with uh, other elements of literacy beyond just reading uh, for speaking and listening and writing as well. So um, you'll see here that this is what uh, the dashboard looks like when you first log in. You'll see there's always a countdown here, which is explaining when the new books are coming out. Um, the new uh, the book, the chapters for each book are released every Friday afternoon, well, Friday at 11 a.m. in the UK. Um, and the voting period uh, is open until Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. So there's five days in there that um, students are, that readers are able to read and still vote. After, uh, after Tuesday at 4 p.m., they're still able to read, but their vote will no longer be registered because the vote's been decided and the author is already working on the next chapter. And the forum state remains active throughout the entire week, so the students are able to continue writing and uh, interacting with the author even um, in between the voting periods. Um, so you'll see we have three books here. Um, there's always three at a time, levels one, two, and three, as well as level one has a light option, which is a slightly reduced uh, word count and um, simplified usage um, for students that might need that kind of access. And um, all of the levels one, two, and three are all geared towards key stage two, but they're, they've been used with success in key stage one and key stage three as well, depending on the demographics of your classroom. Um, so it really just depends on each teacher and the students that they have, what, uh, what level of books are going to work best with them. And a lot of uh, classrooms also use multiple levels uh, because they can be accessible to um, at different levels. And um, so basically you'll see now the, the new books that are coming out. These ones were released over the summer and these are the new books that you'll see coming out. Um, they don't have the chapters listed yet because they haven't been published and they'll be available on the 16th of September, as you can see from the countdown right here. Um, the basic, the way that it works in, um, in general is that the students will enter uh, the chapter by clicking read here and it opens up the reading um, platform. So you see here that uh, this is the first pages of the chapter. Uh, you've got some functionalities here that allow students to change the size of the font, the color of the page with filters, uh, type of font, because these are the types of features that help students that um, struggle with dyslexia or have other kinds of learning disabilities. Um, these are the studies show that these are the most um, 
accessible functions to, to assist them in reading. You'll see that we also have, here's the um, chapter selection so they can skip around if the books are, if there are more chapters available. There's also an audio function where each chapter of each book is read by the author. Um, this is enabled by default um, for each chapter. Some teachers, depending on what kind of, um, what they're working with, prefer to have this disabled. And I can explain later how to, how to turn this off in case you'd rather your students are only reading and not listening. Um, You'll see here that there are certain words that are underlined, and these are the glossary words, so they've been selected. Um, and if you click on them, uh, there will always be uh, a definition, which isn't pulled, it's not a stock def dictionary definition, but it's um, used in context to sort of explain um, what's going on in the context of the story in which it's used here. Um, students will click through to read the entire chapter. You'll see that in the event that they click away to another window, for example, um, it pauses the reading time, which um, is another way that we help to enable the accurate tracking of the students' reading habits. So you'll see the time they started reading, the time they finished, and you'll be able to see if they were reading in um, indiv individual, if they clicked away and clicked back into, into the screen for any reason. Um, read to the end. And here at the end, um, they come to the vote button. Once they click this, the um, chapter will be registered as read uh, from the tracking, which you'll see later. Um, in this case, uh, there will always be three quite three options for the students to choose from. Um, in this case, because the book is finished, once we click on an option, it will show us which one won. In the event that the chapter is is live still, obviously the voting is taking place and uh, there is no result for the for the vote just yet. So it will it will finish here, and um, that's part of the part of the fun for the kids is that they don't know what uh, which of the options won until they open the chapter the following week, um, and hopefully they'll be excited to find out which one by reading it. After voting, you'll see the students are prompted to take a quiz. It's a basic comprehension quiz. Regardless of the level, there are always 10 questions um, that are pulled straight from the chapter itself. So there's no, um, it's multiple choice. Um, and the question, the answers uh, scramble with each uh, student. So they won't always be in the same order, uh, which makes it a little easier for our students to uh, not be able to take note of it was first the first answer or the second answer and um, pass that around. Uh, because the results, the options will always be scrambled and different for each student. Um, you'll see here there's also a read again option because the questions come directly from the from the chapter. In the event that they can't remember um, what the answer was to a particular question, they can open the chapter again and uh, click through to try and find um, where that question, where the answer to that question was within the chapter. So let's see what what we got here. Two out of 10 seems to be the case when you're not paying attention. Um, so you'll see here <clears throat> in this case, um, because this is a teacher account that we've logged in through, it shows us the answers to all of the questions. It shows which ones were correct and which ones were incorrect. Um, this is available to have, it's available to have this for the students as well, but by default, um, the answers to the quiz will be hidden at the end. They'll get to see their score, so they'll see they got 2 out of 10 or 9 out of 10, but they won't be able to see the answers, um, which gives the teachers the opportunity to open this in a class and go through the answers with the students. Um, if you do, for any reason, want to have this available to your students, um, as it is for the teachers, that's something we can enable later on um, from the teacher panel as well. Um, after... But be, so that's the basis of the of the platform: reading, voting, and doing the quiz. Moving on from there, um, you'll see that we also have a ton of activities as well. Each book has a um, course long, a book long project that's developed over five weeks. So each week, you'll see the activity. Um, let's see. Here's the book project for this particular book, which was based on a Greek myth. Um, it's about a harpy. And you'll see that the 
book long project for this uh, particular book is to create your own Greek myth. And each week there's a different assignment that log that sort of um, builds on last in the previous week's uh, activity in order to develop this project throughout the course of the of the whole book. Um, beyond that, each chapter also has its own activity sheet. Um, the activity sheet is another way that we build on uh, reading and writing comprehension. Um, each of the activity sheet for the chapter will also include the that week's installment for the for the longer term project as well. Um, but beyond that, you'll see uh, guided reading notes. There's reading comprehension uh, questions that build on the on the quiz. Um, we've got inspire words here, building upon the glossary. Um, there will be other types of activities, uh, discussion of the options, which is always really lively in class. And um, you've got some other um, types of activities every week too, which is a huge resource for teachers not to have to plan so many activities themselves. We have a, um, every week we have several activities that are just available to them for each chapter. Um, the teacher's version of the activity sheet, of course, will have the answers listed here. The students, of course, will not. Um, beyond the activities, let's see. Um, upon finishing each book, the students will be prompted to um, write uh, a review. So let's see here. If I were a student, this shows my reading progress, and I can see that my own reading progress. You can see that I read this and I did the quiz, but I was not able to vote because it was no longer active. Uh, students will be able to write book reviews for the books. Upon finishing the fifth chapter, they'll be prompted to do so, but they can also access it from here and um, review any books that they've completed. So let's see. And as a teacher, you'll be able to review those as well and, and be able to mark them. Let's see. Beyond book reviews, one, another of the functionalities that we have, which is in, uh, incredibly popular and really cool for the students, is that we have a forum with the author. So in this case, the, uh, the author will be posting questions throughout the week and they change throughout the week. So there'll usually be two or three different questions throughout the week that go um, changing. So the students are constantly being engaged with what's going on in the story and um, able to interact with the author. And you'll see here that um, these are, the forum is currently closed because the books are no longer live, but when the book is available, the forum will be open for students to go in and um, respond to the author's questions. For example, you have a question from the author here. Uh, you'll see that the students are asked to create uh, an alias when they first log into the forum. Um, because it's uh, really important to us that we make sure this is a, a safe online space uh, for the students. Um, so rule number one is that there's no personal information allowed in the in the forum. So we discourage students from posting anything about their school or their or their name. Uh, they have to use an alias to post so that it's fairly anonymous. We do have the little flags here that show um, the, the nationalities of the students that are posting in the, in the forum because it's kind of exciting to see um, how many different students from how many different countries are interacting all at the same time with the author and with each other. Um, you'll see the author is also able to um, read through the comments and there are quite a lot of comments so they can't respond to every single student, but they do their best to um, respond to some of the students so the students can see that the authors are um, reading their reading their responses and trying their best to um, respond to them to make sure there's always they're always in contact. Um, as the teacher, you'll see that um, beyond access to the to the forum itself um, a student will be able to see uh, their own participation um, and the, the teacher has this review tab here which um, allows as a teacher to see all of the comments posted from all of your um, students and here you'll see their name as well as their alias because in the um, in the public aspect of the forum everything is anonymous but you as a teacher will be able to see your own students names uh, and know who they are in the forum and of course from the review tab these will be all of your students um, because we're 
uh, so dedicated to having to making sure that this that the the forum is a safe space for children. Uh, we do have a list of inappropriate words um, that automatically block the comment from being posted to the public forum. So if any of these words shows up uh, are recognized, um, the filter automatically blocks this. So this particular comment here, which is in red, is not visible on the uh, on the forum until a teacher or one of our moderators at Fiction Express um, is able to read it and approve um, that it is uh, appropriate um, or not. In this case, we can see that obviously the student just um, made a typo or a spelling mistake here that made it look like it's an inappropriate word. So as a teacher, you can review that and say, oh no, there's no problem here. Um, if it's necessary, you can make um, edits to it. Um, to the student's comment, now it's appropriate. Um, and you can click in the, in the case that it is inappropriate, click invalidate and it will not be ever posted to the forum. If you click validate, it will then appear on the forum in public. Um, and you see, so that's the, and here you'll see that students are able to um, also um, lodge complaints against other comments. So in the event that something manages to slip through, uh, which is un unlikely, but um, students can uh, basically complain, uh, lodge, a, report other comments. Um, so that you'll see that as well as the teacher. You'll see if one of your um, students has a comment that's been reported and you'll be able to either um, to choose to invalidate it or, or leave it in the event that it, it isn't inappropriate. Um, so that covers all the sort of safeguarding and um, aspects that we have to make sure that the forum is a positive place for students. But we also have some ways of rewarding students that make excellent comments in the, in the, in the forum. So here you've got, um, this is what it looks like when a student receives a certificate. So students that post particularly good comments in the forum are eligible to receive a certificate. The authors um, note down their favorite responses in the forum and they send it to us to basically nominate students to receive a certificate. Our moderation team, which also um, helps to moderate the comments to make sure nothing, um, to make sure that everything is under control in the forum, are also looking for these. Um, and when a student receives a certificate, they get this little logo next to their name that appears in the forum. Um, and they'll also be invited to uh, a Zoom call with the author at the end of the cycle. At the end of each cycle, we collect all the students that have uh, received certificates and they're invited to do a special call with the author that uh, allows them to ask them questions about the writing process, about the book and anything else they'd like to chat with the author about. Uh, so it's nice, um, it's a really exciting time for the kids and um, great for the authors to be able to interact with them, especially with the students that posted the best comments throughout the, the book cycle. And let's see here beyond the forum. And so that's basically everything that, that's how it works uh, more or less for the live books that we have. Um, and they come out, um, there are always five chapters. So they're published over five weeks and then there'll be a two week break. And then, except during winter, there's a longer break. And, um, and then the next um, book, the next book will be released in another five chapters going onwards. But beyond that, we also have the library here, which has every book that's ever been published on Fiction Express logged and available at all times. Um, so as a teacher, you'll be able to search by, everyone will be able to search by author genres. Uh, we have tags here with certain themes in the event that you're working with um, uh, on any particular themes in class, you can try to find books that are specifically related to that. And of course you can search here. You'll see that each of the books has this little heart button underneath. And if you click on it, it adds it to the wish list. The wish list you'll see here under the My Lists tab, which um, allows you to see all the books that, that you've clicked the little heart and it collects them all here. So anything that catches your interest, you can return to. As a teacher, you'll see that you also have the ability to recommend books to your students. So in this, in this case, you're able to click recommendations here and add books that you would like to assign to your class. Say you want to assign them over, um, over a break or to read throughout the course outside of the live books that are being published. And you can select them here. You can rearrange the order of preference and save them. And the students will see the recommendations in my lists along with the wish list. And let's see. 
so that pretty much covers everything that we've got in terms of the front end of the of the platform of how reading and activities and voting and all of that stuff goes. So now we'll just do a quick little review of what it looks like um, from behind the scenes as a teacher or the admin. In this as a teacher, you'll see you'll have a My Students tab. The students uh, login looks pretty much exactly like this, except they're not going to have the My Students tab. So as a teacher, you can click here and it allows you to see um, the tracking of your students. So let's see, this class doesn't have any history. But here you'll be able to see that for the most recent books, um, this was a level two class and they've all read. Um, you'll be able to see here uh, the, the the results they got on the quiz, whether they read in time to vote, um, as well as um, you can check the reading time for each chapter. Here you can toggle this on and off to see more about that, um, about the reading time. You see these are all zero because most of the students are fake, but this is an idea of what it would look like. Um, you can also see whether they have comments, whether um, they've been they've received a certificate, and um, you can also check by those particular students so that you can see their um, long-term history, showing all of the books that they've read um, last year and all of their activity, including book reviews and comments. Um, so this is also where you'll see um, the book reviews. If your students have any, you can select the class here. you'll be able to see who wrote um, and basically be able to mark them if they haven't already been marked, these ones have, um, and read the book reviews. Uh, this is also from the exercises tab right here. This is also where you will be able to um, enable or disable the, let's see. Ah, because there's, this is also where you'll be able to um, enable or disable the view of the um, quiz result, uh, the quiz results at the end of the chapter. You'll be able to determine here whether or not they are able to see the quiz answers at the end. This is also where as a teacher, you'll be able to manage the classes, which means um, disactivating the audio for the class. You can access their um, logins, add students, class edits, the class um, deletes, add students, all of that kind of um, behind the scenes management. And you'll have access to the, all of their logins, which you'll see. Uh, you should be able to see here. Uh, we've got them and designed like this, so you can print it out and cut them out and give each student their unique password and username in, in case they um, need that in paper form. And beyond that, let's see, that pretty much covers um, all of the behind the scenes stuff we've got for today. Um, We'll be doing another uh, webinar on tomorrow on Tuesdays that covers a lot more of this, including the admin panel in the event that you um, are the admin for your school, which has some extra um, data and access as well. Um, but for today, I'll just leave you with the last um, tab here, which is documentation. It's got the publishing calendar, so you can see when the new books are being released, at what times, um, uh, information on the next books, information for parents, tutorials about how to do all the stuff I've shown you today. Um, and we've also got the, um, let's see, the reading levels uh, that we discussed earlier, a uh, rough approximation of um, when students tend to be reading them. So um, I think that's about everything that we've got today. That covers all the basics. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so we'll pop back here to the schedule of the webinars, just to give you a reminder. Um, if you have any questions about uh, this type of stuff, we'll be going over this again tomorrow um, with the uh, managing classes, students, teachers' permissions, how to do all this sort of behind the scenes stuff, as well as on Thursday with the tracking and evaluation. Um, so please go ahead and sign up for those webinars if that's something, if you find that you have more questions about that. Um, otherwise, feel free to... Um, if you have any questions now, you can go ahead and pop those into the Q&A bar, which is just at the bottom of the screen, and we'll be able to get those answered for you. And I've got a 
uh, colleague who's working with me will be able to answer the questions. Otherwise, I'll see them and I can just answer them now directly. So if anybody's got any questions, now's a good time. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like there are any questions. I'll leave it for just another minute. And if not. All right. Well, I think that's just about it. Um, I hope that uh, this has been helpful to everyone who tuned in today. And oh, let's see. Looks like we do have a question here. How often should children connect to the platform? In this case, it really just depends on on the teacher, how they're using it in class, whether um, whether you're reading in class, whether it's assigned for homework. Uh, but generally, of course, um, best uh, you best for them to connect at least once between Friday and Tuesday, uh, because they'll need to do the reading and and hopefully while they're able to vote. Uh, but beyond that, it really depends on how you how you plan to use it in your classroom. Any other questions? Okay. Well, it looks like that should do it for today. Um, feel free to sign up for our webinars in the future. Um, if you have any remaining questions, you can also contact us at support at fictionexpress.com and we'll be happy to connect you um, or answer any questions that you might have remaining. So that's it for today. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, happy reading. <laughs>